everybody. So as you know, I've been stopping at animal sanctuaries and I am at um, a very neat one in Ohio right now. It's called Back to the Wild um, Wildlife Rehabilitation and Nature Education Center. Every day, tons and tons of animals are injured mainly due to human causes such as litter or greed from people or people going out wanting exotic pets that they know that they think they can take care of but they actually can't. And just imagine if sanctuaries didn't exist. These animals would be left to die. So a really cool thing about Back to the Wild, as the name states, they tend to bring the animals back to the wild and rehabilitate them as best as they can. Now some animals are beyond repair, like if a legal, an eagle loses a wing to a power line, then they are used for education purposes to prevent future animals from being injured and having to be taken here so they can just live their whole life out happily in the wild. First let's start off with this bald eagle right behind me. This bald eagle was affected by West Nile virus which is carried by mosquitoes and she got so sick that she got to a state where she couldn't hunt, almost starved to death and was almost eaten. Then someone had called in who had found her and they brought her here and now she'll live a much happier life uh, being taken care of and being fed here. So there she is, very beautiful. But let's keep moving and see what other furry friends we have. Now the first stop on our tour that I'm going to show you is a cool looking plant right here. Now if you don't know what this is, this is called milkweed, but it is toxic to many animals and humans, but there is one creature that depends on it, the monarch butterfly. Now you've probably seen these flying around outside and this features a male which has these little black dots um, on the veins and the wings you can see and then the female. What the monarch butterfly does is it only lays eggs on the bottom of a milkweed leaf. As you can see, there's a very tiny little egg right there that a monarch butterfly laid and uh, maybe it will turn into a beautiful butterfly like that orange one that I showed you. And once it hatches, it will move over to the larva state, which is the caterpillar. Now this is a very beautiful caterpillar, the monarch butterfly caterpillar. Um, very vibrant colors of yellow and white and black. There's a very small version. Then it moves into the chrysalis state and in that state it will then turn into a butterfly and it'll come out and dry its wings up and fly away back into nature. So once these guys turn into butterflies they will be released. The monarch is actually poisonous so if a bird comes down and eats it the bird is not in for a fun future ahead of it. I'm gonna put these guys back and show you another creature. So I am standing here next to uh, North America's only marsupial and um, it's a marsupial like koalas are and kangaroos so she does have a pouch that she carries her little babies around in but she doesn't have any babies at the moment. But she was born with a jaw problem and she had eating disabilities and she almost died. She had flies on her and she was actually brought in and um, they found ways to get her the nutrients she needs. But um, as I said, she was brought in and on that topic, I've seen at least three or so cars pull up in the probably hour I've been here with animals that people have found that they bring in to the animal rehabilitation center. Either they'll find a baby or an injured animal. And a lot of the time with babies, the mom just goes out to do something and they'll find the babies and they'll think the mom abandoned them and they'll bring them in and the mom will get back and be like, hey, where'd my babies go? They said they can have up to 40 animals brought in every day and that's just outrageous. But, yep, here's the um, Virginia opossum. Let's go check out some more feathery and furry creatures. So, um, another reason that Back to the Wild is really cool is they've got this little center here. Now this is a pre-release enclosure. And what it is, it's just if a bird has been injured or something and they're sitting in um, their other enclosure, which tends to be smaller, they aren't able to work out their wings like if they're um, fully healthy out in the wild flying around. So before the birds are released, this is more, tends to be larger raptors. They're able to fly around this L-shaped room. As you can see, it's L-shaped. But the reason it's L-shaped is so that they can go back and forth and turn and just strengthen each side when they veer to different directions. But yeah, once these guys get their workout in, there's actually two bald eagles and two red-tailed hawks in here. But once they get their workout in, they'll be ready to be released and they'll go release them back into the wild. 
So now I'm in a part that is actually more behind the scenes. It's not open to the public. And the reason is because these guys are more little baby type animals. Um, got some uh, all sorts of little baby birds and uh, baby rabbits, but I'll show you all of them. But just imagine, it's difficult enough to take care of all those big animals outside. Like you got to get them the amount of food they need, which is super expensive. Uh, you got to clean their cage and I'm sure being their size, like when those huge birds or foxes, they probably make quite the mess. But with these little guys who need lots more attention, like even with the smaller ones I'm about to show you, where they don't have their mother to take care of them, so they need to be kept warm and they need to be fed the correct type of food and the correct amount of time, like you've got to chart it and everything. But all sorts of adorable little guys. Um, yes, they are cute, but they also are a lot of work. Here's some little baby bunnies here. So teeny tiny, like look at that in comparison to my finger, they're real small. And here's a little bird that I encounter a lot in Texas is the killdeer. And they run so fast. But one cool little thing about the killdeer is, and for the mother to protect the babies, if a human or a predator goes near the nest, it will act like it's injured, like it has a broken wing or something. It'll make all sorts of noise and run away from the nest and try and draw you away. So. Um, she really loves her little babies. And then, yep, there's some robins. And if we move farther over here, we've got something that's meant for even smaller little babies. This is an incubator. As you can see, there's a really teeny tiny little bunny rabbit there. Um, barely got any fur on her. And here's a really teeny tiny little bird. And just imagine having to take care of these guys because they're so very fragile and they need the correct type of food at the correct amount of time and they got to be kept warm. But yeah, so there's the baby section. Here we have one of my favorite little animals and it's very cute. And um, it's actually the most common squirrel in Ohio, but it's very rarely seen. Um, it outnumbers all the other species of squirrel, but since it's nocturnal, it's um, hard to spot. But this is a flying squirrel. Now they've got this, um, s these skin flaps on the side that helps them to supposedly fly around. It's not actually flying, but more gliding. And they've got a flat tail to help steer. So it's a very original little animal and you can tell it's got some nice adaptations. And here's a picture of one in mid-flight. You can just see um, how cool they are. And yeah, if you spot one of these guys in the wild, you're pretty lucky because they're hard to see. Almost all of the animals here are here because of humans interfering with nature. Now, as I said, they will become injured or sick due to pollution or um, littering or all sorts of things. But another thing is people think they can keep an exotic pet when they really can't. They don't realize that these guys need to be out in the wild and they just don't work being in a house and being fed dog food when they're actually a wild animal. Like this one is a bobcat and it was taken from its den when it was just a little kitten and its mom had to move all the other kittens away and find a new spot. But the guy who had taken him from his natural habitat had declawed him and was planning to keep him as a pet but luckily he was confiscated and brought here. So since he was declawed he is not able to survive and do wild things like he naturally would do, such as hunt or climb. But there he is, a very beautiful animal. So now, here is another animal. This one is called an African leopard tortoise. Now, uh, most of you know that tortoises are herbivores. Now, this guy um, is from Africa, like the African desert, and they are sold in some pet stores. And what people don't know when they go to buy them is how big they can get. This guy right now doesn't seem too big, but he can actually get to over 100 pounds. Like, that's crazy. And they're so strong, they can actually use their shell to like ram through drywall and all sorts of stuff. But the person who had bought him did not know anything about how to care for him or anything. They actually fed him dog food and dog food does have meat in it. And since this guy's an herbivore and messed up his nutrition and what he needs, they also fed him hot dogs and it's just horrible. So you can see that it actually messed up his whole skeletal system because he did not get the proper nutrients that he needs in order to um, 
grow properly and you can see uh, there's something called pyramiding on a shell where you can see the peaks start to go up and that's not natural for him and he does have disabilities because of um, his improper diet that his old owners did feed him and luckily he was able to or he did get brought in here and now he's getting the the correct diet that he needs uh, if I could I'd stay here all day and look at all these guys because they're just so entertaining to watch and it's fun to keep learning about them. But there's tons of complications with running um, a place like this, this rehabilitation center, because you've got to buy medication for the animals, you've got to buy enclosures, you've got to buy uh, like their perches if they're a bird, uh, you've got to pay for all their food because food alone is just overwhelming the prices for them. So if there's uh, animal rehabilitation center or an animal sanctuary in your area please try and help them without these guys imagine all these animals uh, I didn't even show you like half of them there's just tons of them but all these animals they would not most likely they would not be alive without these guys protecting them and keeping them healthy and another thing you can do is just be smart uh, don't litter you know, make sure you pick up after yourself when you're out in the wild don't feed wild animals because like when I was in Wyoming, they have signs around that says, don't feed the bears because the bears can become aggressive and they have to be euthanized. Same with foxes um, in the area. I heard a story where the foxes got too used to people because they did feed them and they had to be euthanized because they can carry diseases that are harmful to humans. But yeah, so um, yeah, I'd love it if you guys are able to help them out, but I have got to keep moving. So thanks for watching you guys and thank you Back to the Wild for letting me do um, a little tour here and...